Hi guys. It is truly an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous. Sancho, come on now, we're going this way. Uh, unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times on the planet. I am at, uh, it is Thursday, March the 4th, uh, 2021, as springtime is bursting out all over. I am standing in the single most beautiful uh, campground, well, certainly a contender for one of the single most beautiful campgrounds in the state of Florida. Uh, and this is a free campground, totally free to come camp here. Now, of course, what they did is, see, this is the campground that they barred those big ass uh, RVs from. They put the fence across, and so they opened this up. You have to park there and walk anywhere from 30 to 90 seconds from your car uh, to your to your tent and since they did that it's just 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 been a ghost town down here that uh <laughs> anyway this is this gorgeous tree this is one of the prettiest oak trees in the state of florida I, Looks like she's back for another year of those bright green leaves. Instead of bright green lies, we have bright green leaves uh, against that blue sky. Look at that, guys. So anyway, I've, I, I did my, uh, my depressed collapsitarian whine. I kind of did that last night, so I don't know what you call this. But this is just kind of uh, an extension of both of my videos uh, that I made yesterday. The one, you know, where I was reading all those quotes about fear, famous quotes about fear. And then I posted that video and then uh, found out, the, you know, if you listen to my depressed collapsitarian whine about these people who had come to my hip camp uh, and while they were there their damn dog bit me and they're telling me last night that I learned from the folks whose dog it was that because of what happened they euthanized their dog that they killed their dog because uh, of, of what happened and uh, so I put that video on out there and it seems like the uh, consensus among folks and the people around the neighborhood that I've told this the consensus of that is that the guy is playing me like a fish that there's no fucking way that that young couple would have killed their dog uh, over the, like what did they have to gain by killing their dog? I, I, I mean, I had made no, uh, you, you know, I, I had I had never contacted them. I certainly had not gotten a lawyer. I had never sent them a medical bill. Uh, it just makes no sense that why would they kill their dog? They obviously loved this dog. I mean, it was clear to me that uh, they loved their dog. Their dog loved them. He was this big, beautiful German Shepherd. Uh, you know, shit happens. The dog bit me. Uh, and now the dog is or is not dead. And I hope the... Uh, that Julianne and the rest of you claiming Hambone, they're fucking uh, yanking your chain because they're scared that you're going to, uh, that you're going, you know, to file some sort of vicious dog complaint against them. So they're lying to me, I guess, out of fear 
that uh, I am going to uh, to do something at, at, at this point. And Julianne, I hope you're reading their fear correctly. But, I, you know, I, I met this young couple, okay? I, you know, I spent the evening with them the day before. And at least I'm glad to report that they were not wearing masks out there at my end of the road out in the swamp hip camp that uh, they at least or maybe she did just right when they got there she was wearing a mask and he was not wearing a mask and uh, but she took her mask off uh, soon after she got there so at least that's encouraging but beyond that uh, you, you could, when that happened, when their dog bit me, I mean, you should have seen, it, it, it was beyond fear. I, I mean, it, it, it was like terror in their eyes. And, uh, you know, because I, I was pissed, they were dealing with me being pissed off after being attacked in my own kitchen by their damn dog who was uh, prohibited from being in the kitchen. Uh, but what they were clearly terrified of is that I was going to uh, make some, some legal trouble for them. They did not have any concern about my physical well-being. It, 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 it was clear, I mean, just the abject terror in, in this young couple's eyes. I mean, they, they couldn't have... Uh, uh, got that dog thrown in their truck and ripped down their tent fast enough to get the hell off of that property. You know, and they were, they were clearly uh, terrified that I was going to make some sort of case against them. I mean, I'm, even though I told them I'm not the kind of guy that would ever do that, just be damn glad it was me and not somebody else especially a child, or you would be fucked right now. Or we'd all be fucked right now if it had happened on my property. And uh, so anyway, the fear uh, the trigger, uh, and it was that fear, but I have no way of knowing whether they killed that dog or not. And as much as I want to uh, believe that Julianne and the rest of you uh, making that call, uh, I'm, as much as I hope you're right, I, I don't think you are. I do think they killed the, the the damn dog and uh so now do i need uh, do i need to feel guilty about my part in this that that uh that that dog just acting like a fucking dog uh cost him his damn life uh you know what a fucking mess you know i'm i'm, I'm feeling like uh do you remember i'm probably dating myself here. Uh, if you remember the very last, I think it was the very last episode of MASH, you know, where Hawkeye was having these nightmares about a crowing chicken uh, that he was trying. And so I, and so when it was real hokey, so the shrink comes in and, and they do a little bit of dream retrieval about what was that nightmare about this crowing chicken and and what it was uh i mean i watched this mash about 40 years ago what it was the the, the crowing chicken is that they had been on a bus in enemy territory or something so the medics had been there traveling with <clears throat> you know some basically some peasants and one of the women on the bus had a uh, had a young baby on the bus with them and the baby was crying and if and if the crying baby had given away their position they were hiding out in the out in the jungle while this uh, 
in enemy territory. And so I guess uh, some sort of platoon of enemy soldiers was coming by. And uh, if that crying baby had given their position away, the, the whole gang of them would have been fucked. Uh, and so Hawkeye, you, you know, was saying, you know, telling the, the woman, shut that baby up. You know, shut that fucking baby up. And uh, what he meant was get the kid to stop crying. And of course, what the woman did, uh, she was so terrified, uh, you know, in the situation that she was in, that she smothered her baby. She killed her own baby to, uh, you know, to keep the, 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 the gang from being discovered. Uh, and, and, I, and, and, I, and I, of course, Hawkeye could not process the, the guilt that it was his fault for, uh, you know what I know. <laughs> and so he actually turned it into a nightmare about a crowing chicken and uh, to cover up uh, his guilt of, of telling the woman to get her baby to quiet down and how this unintended consequence. So now uh, he has to carry the guilt around. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, I know how Hawkeye felt in, uh, in that epi the final episode of MASH. Uh, she killed her baby. She killed her baby. Oh, Jesus. And, it, and it's just how it, 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 this whole idea about fear, I have really been thinking about this. So either they're just lying to me, these people with this dog, they're lying to me about killing their dog out of fear uh, that I'm going to try to sue them or something, or they really did kill their dog either because they were terrified that I was going to come after them or that it was going to happen again and uh, that since there was a possibility that their dog was going to bite somebody else you know particularly a child uh, they looked at their available options, such as a leash, a muzzle, uh, maybe some obedience lessons. They they looked at their at their at their range of possibilities, and, and and out of just completely out of control fear, they killed their own dog. And and I think this is I hate to say I think this is exactly what happened. I saw the fear in, uh, in, in, in that young couple's eyes. Uh, you know, and, it, and it's just set off. Uh, I have really been uh, just thinking about the whole concept of fear and all of those quotes I was uh, reading yesterday. Of course, all of those quotes that I read yesterday were written before the corona panic. Uh, they did not, they were not directly addressing, I was, but, but you know what I'm saying, it was, they, they, it's just, just this incredible power we give to fear. I mean, it is, I, I am, uh, after looking at this goddamn planet in the past year, uh, how anybody could say at this point, that fear is not the uh, the number one driving force for humanity. Uh, the number one emotion, the number one driving force. I don't care if it's an individual uh, from you know from the individual right up to our entire uh, species. That how we react to like everything 
from a place of fear. It's, uh, who was it? I think it was songwriter Steve, Steve Forbert. Uh, he has a line about analyzing everything into a no. About how you take anything, uh, you know, something is a possibility is put on your table. So you have this possibility to consider uh, that could bring a whole lot of pleasure and reward to your life, but there is no such thing as a risk-free possibility. So anybody can sit down there and, and, and look at what the universe is laying out before them and analyze it into a no. Uh, what's the name of that song, Don't You Go... Th thinking and thinking and uh, basically the more you analyze the situation you're going to let your fear uh, kick in and, and hold you back and so the, those quotes I was reading there there's the two main categories uh, of uh, of, of fear that they were were talking about is that just uh, you know j just the usual fear that pervades everything uh, you know the fear of uh, of some wild hog jumping out of there the fear of a a water moccasin biting Sancho Panza and killing him whatever but most of the quotes. We're talking about how fear keeps, holds you back. That uh, that the fear of dying. Uh, this, uh, of, of course, this one I found over and over again. The fear of dying. Uh, what it is is, is actually the fear of living that you're so goddamn terrified to get out of your little comfort zone. Uh, that people are so terrified uh, uh, of stepping out of their comfort zones, letting go of the bank and, and letting the current take them through life. All of these little uh, cliches. Uh, and, and, and it's damn true that, uh, that it is fear, it, you, that you just need to bust through your fear if you want to step out of your comfort zone. And, you know, when you analyze the, the situation and you say, what is the worst that can happen to me here? And the worst that could happen to you is you're going to die. You make this decision, the absolute worst case scenario is somehow you're going to die by making uh, this decision. Well, when you sit there and think about it and understand you're going to die anyway, okay? It makes no difference what decision you make about anything in your life, you are going to die. Sancho, Far enough. What, do you want to get bit by a water moccasin? Do you want to get attacked by a wild hog? Do you want to get eaten by an alligator? Sancho. Uh, we have enough dead dogs. Anyway, my fearless little dog. Uh, Sancho needs a little more fear in his life. And uh, so once you understand that you ain't getting out of this life alive, you tend, you, when you use death as your advisor, when your own death advises you, dude, I'm going to win the game. So uh, there's no way you're going to dodge my grim reaper ass. So what are you going to do uh, about living your life with that knowledge that one of these, one of these uh, wolves outside the cave door is, is going to take you out? And so once you understand you are going to die and, and you accept that, 
uh, you know, on a cellular level, my guess is you're most likely uh, going to take a lot more, quote, chances. You're going to live a more interesting life. You are probably going to make some decisions that are going to get you into some damn pickles that you never would have gotten into if you had not made such a rash decision. Uh, that, that is the gamble that, uh, well, that's the gamble that gamblers take. You know, it's uh, when I announced in, you know, 2008, when I was sitting there, you know, how many times have I said, you know, in my beautiful home on the Green Belt in South Austin, uh, making over a hundred thousand dollars a year uh, living the life of Riley surrounded by hundreds of my friends uh, you know I was leading the life in 2008 that 99% uh, of this planet would probably have traded for and when I announced I was quitting my job selling my beautiful home and uh, moving to the Peruvian Amazon uh, <laughs> to wait out the end times, people had thought I had absolutely lost my fucking mind. And what it was, the question I heard more than anything, I, I mean, other than why the fuck are you doing this? Uh, are you out of your... Uh, not counting the question, have you completely lost your fucking mind walking away, voluntarily walking away from, uh, from this life? Uh, other than that, it's, the, it, it's it, what I heard more than anything that the question was, aren't you scared? Aren't you scared? I, you know, I heard this a lot, uh, you know, back in uh, the early 90s where uh, what I would do, uh, what I did for five years is half my life, I would live the life of Riley in Eugene, Oregon, uh, selling real estate, having my little organic farm, uh, you know, having this life. And then I would do that for half the year, this safe, secure uh, life in Eugene, Oregon. And then what I would do uh, every fall is I would pack up and drive to Costa Rica. And this was during, you know, those civil wars down there in Guatemala and, and all of that. And, uh, you know, I would drive through uh, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua. Uh, you know, the, the State Department having all of these absolutely... Uh, do not travel down there. And the very thought of driving a vehicle uh, across uh, Guatemala, Honduras, and uh, Nicaragua in, in the 90s, you know, people are, aren't you scared? Or there is no fucking way I would do that. You know, the U.S. State Department has warned uh, about this. Aren't you scared? Well, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, I was a little bit scared uh, of doing it, and uh, I, I fucking dealt with it. And then, and, and the other one going hand in hand with the, uh, you know, getting your ass killed, thrown in a third world prison, getting your truck stolen uh, by some corrupt government official, which is exactly what happened to me in Panama, where I essentially got my truck stolen from me. Uh, but all of that, then, then it was also the fucking wild animals. It was the poisonous snakes. That's a big one. Uh, aren't you scared of getting bitten by a snake, eaten by a jaguar? And then, of course, there were the little... Uh, the microbes and the viruses, number one being malaria. You know, malaria, yellow fever, uh, Zika virus, 
uh, this thing uh, that some bed bug I can't even remember the name of that one. All of this litany of, uh, of, uh, of bugs and viruses and microbes and, uh, you know, all of these vaccinations. Aren't you getting these vaccinations that the World Health Organization telling you, hang on, you better get these vaccinations. Uh, you better take your malaria pills every day. Uh, you know, all of these people I met down there in, in, in the tropics coming down there for a two-week vacation. Good God, they've taken all of these fucking vaccinations. They uh, took their damn malaria pills every day. I was down there for seven years. Seven years li living in the middle uh, of all of this, living out in the damn jungle, uh, whatnot. Uh, in seven years, uh, I think I might have seen one poisonous snake in seven years. I, there, there are as many poisonous snakes within a five minute uh, radius of me right now than I ever saw in seven years in Costa Rica. Uh, I never got malaria. I never got yellow fever. I never got the uh, Zika. I never got uh, Chichunga, Zazunga, uh, West Nile. Uh, I never took one precaution. I mean, I, I took one scan, can of mosquito repellent, which would last me uh, six months. I would, a, a can of mosquito repellent that most gringos would use in about 48 hours would last me six months. I'm back at my my secret garden, look at spring busting out all over in my secret garden. Man, is it beautiful here in the secret garden. But we're not, no, little no, dog, we got to keep going. I'm getting hungry. Uh, so I was down there for seven years. Seven years. Uh, never uh, ended up in a prison. Uh, I was robbed 33 times. I was robbed 33 times in, in Latin America. Uh, only once, kind of at gunpoint, I've told that story about, uh, you know, yes, I was robbed uh, 33 times. I had some very terrifying encounters with uh, third world cops and soldiers and federales and uh, some pretty terrifying border crossings. And I try the goddamn Honduras Nicaragua border crossing sometime and and here I am. Uh, I, I'm alive to talk about it. The single biggest injury I got, the two biggest injuries I got in seven years in Latin America. One was where I was walking across a uh, a, a lawn barefooted in a piece of grass with a sharp blade went up between two of my toes and sliced the webbing between my toes. And uh, what are you doing? Are you, are you attacking a water moccasin or what? Or a rattlesnake? Uh, and that got infected and then I was attacked by two geese in Guatemala. I was assaulted by two geese and uh, that got, in fact, the two biggest injuries I received in seven years of driving the coast. Well, not counting my wreck. Of course, I did have a wreck where I broke my back. Not, not counting that right at the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, but uh, how many times aren't you scared? Aren't you scared? Well... Uh, I could have sat there and uh, analyzed any of that into a no. But, uh, you know, once you, you use death as your advisor and say, well, something's going to fucking kill you. Uh, you know, is it going to be a goddamn uh, 
mosquito? Uh, is it going to be a virus? Is it going to be a car wreck? Uh, are you going to get attacked by a vicious animal, uh, bitten by a snake? Uh, on and on and on. You, you, you can play this game and uh, just having fear uh, holding you back. And, uh, and good God, this, this comment today from Supremo down there in, in Brazil. You know, how many times have I, have I mentioned this? You know, he was going down the list uh, about seat belts. There is one reason that I wear seat belts. It is called the police state. It is the, 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 it is the fear of the legal consequences of not wearing a seat belt. It is not the fear of being injured in a wreck. I have been, had nine wrecks in my life, never been wearing a seat belt in any one of them. Any of the nine wrecks, I had no seat belt on. Uh, here I am alive to talk about it. There is one reason I wear seat belts. Now, interestingly, I, I, I always did wear motorcycle helmets. And I'm damn glad I did. I would be dead right now if I had not worn uh, motorcycle helmets. Uh, explain it. I, I looked at the possibility, you know, even as a 16 year old, I looked at, uh, you know, I, I weighed the evidence, decided that I was going to wear uh, motorcycle helmets. Okay. Uh, life jackets. You know, I was a major goddamn uh, white water canoeist and rafter when I was young. Absolutely would not wear a fucking life jacket. I'm a strong swimmer. Oh yes, don't, don't forget the main one, condoms. Uh, the very thought of, uh, of, of a condom. Uh, good God, you think I'm an anti-masker? The very thought of wearing condoms. Uh, I think maybe twice in my life I have worn a, uh, worn a goddamn condom. Uh, the, the very thought of, uh, of, of wearing condoms, and my God, uh, all those years I spent in South Austin, Texas, which is the, uh, you know, as soon as I got to South Austin, which is, you know, being like a bull in a china closet, you know, all the guys saying, dude, you are in the, uh, the STD capital of the planet. I spent, uh, how many years in South Austin, Texas, having a whole lot of fun without ever wearing a condom. Uh, never got, uh, never got the creeping crud. Never happened. My whole life. Now, my brother, who was gay, died of AIDS. Okay, and, and now, I am not gay. I am heterosexual, but you better believe uh, I, I stuck my uh, tally whacker uh, wherever uh, I was allowed to stick it. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the behaviors I had, uh, the unsafe sex, the lifetime uh, of unsafe sex I've had. What else did Suprema mention? Of course, uh, refined sugar. Refined sugar is the, uh, the basis of my diet. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, it's, uh, it, it's all, it's a matter of looking at the evidence, assessing the risk, asking yourself, what's the worst that, that uh, could happen here? And when you know that the worst you, that can happen is that you could die. And, uh, and, you know, my mama, Elaine Mitchell, uh, you know, she was a shrink and raised five kids. I know I've told this story a hundred times, but for the one or two of you who have, uh, are still listening to me talking to myself, uh, so I was the fifth kid. And by the t time I came along, 
And, you know, my mother, who had gone through this fucking movie before four times, when I started entering my rebellious teenage years, she, uh, my mother, who is pretty goddamn fearless, Elaine Mitchell, one of the most fearless human beings I've ever met, you know, she boiled it down. She boiled it down. She said, this was when I was like 12, that there are three rules in this house between you and me. I am, I am putting down three rules uh, as I was entering my rebellious teenage years. Number one, stay out of jail. Her number one rule, uh, push the envelope wherever you want to, stay out of jail. It was the fear of legal problems was the number one uh, fear in her rule setting. The number two fear, stay out of the hospital. You know, go out there and get yourself all banged up and skin your knees, fall off the horse a couple of times, get back up in the saddle, just stay out of the hospital, which probably had more to do with me wearing motorcycle helmets than anything. Stay out of jail, stay out of the hospital, then of course her third rule was leave me out of the rest of your bullshit. Uh, and I did a pretty good job on um, leaving uh, my poor mother out of, out of my bullshit. And I am 61 years old, 61 years old. So this probably 49 years ago, my mother laid down this rule. Here I am, 49 years later, how many nights has Ham on Little Tail spent in jail since the day he was born? If your answer is zero, give yourself a gold star. And how many nights has Hambone Little Tail spent the night in the hospital? In the hospital. Uh, if your answer is zero, give yourself a gold star. Uh, I took my mama's advice. I boiled it down to two things. What is really, what are the two things to be scared about? Cops and doctors. Cops and doctors. Stay out of fucking jail. Stay out of the goddamn hospital. Uh, you know, do your, do your damn research. Do your due diligence. Figure out what is the worst that can happen in this situation and dying is the worst that can happen in any situation. You can live in, in, in a fucking little bubble. You can wear all the masks you want. You can take all the vaccines you want. You can wear all the condoms you want, seat belts, life jackets. Uh, and guess what, motherfucker? You're gonna die. All your fucking masks and condoms and the whole bit ain't gonna change that. You're gonna fucking die. Fucking deal with it. And then uh, you will find yourself not analyzing nearly as many things into a no. And of course, you will also find yourself getting yourself into a lot of goddamn situations that hambone. Uh, has gotten himself into that you'll never get you. I will never get myself in that situation because I'm not going to do what Hambone did. And uh, good for you. Good for you, but uh, I am going to uh, continue to bumble on through this planet uh, and Sniffing down a lot of damn rabbit trails and uh, let my little dog have some fun. My little dog gets uh, bitten by a rattlesnake or a water moccasin or if my little dog gets eaten by a fucking alligator, whatever. He died happy. Uh, you know... 
if Sancho in the next 30 seconds gets killed by a fucking wild hog, uh, will I feel guilty? Sure. Could I have prevented it? Yes, I could. The dog will die with a smile on his face. And anybody uh, who can say, I died with a smile on my face, obviously is doing something right. And that is my goal, is to get eaten by one of these wolves outside of the, uh, lurking out the cave door with a smile on my face. And with that, I see my, well, not my gas-sucking truck, the rent-a-truck coming back into, uh, back into view. So this is your old fool. You know, the, uh, <laughs> my tarot card is the fool. I, uh, heartily invite you to look up the fool card uh, and look at the little dog uh, that the fool marches around with. Anyway, this fool has got to wrap this up because I got to get home and cook me and the dog some ribbies. Bye, guys. Sancho, where are you? Little fool is gone again. My little dog has disappeared into the deep dark forest. Sancho! I gotta go find my dog. Bye guys.